marketing is a fundamental component of a company's success. Apart from providing profit and increasing revenue, there are also many other tasks that sales personnel can work on to make a difference in the company. Some of these functions include building bonds between the company and consumers by increasing trust and loyalty among consumers. Despite their limitations, automated systems will have an impact on this profession. Present methods of selling will be irrevocably changed by automation. If you are in sales and are good at what you do, technological support may be the best sales tool since the telephone. So, if you want to know more about a salesperson and a sales expert, then this video is for you. Luckily for you, BBC member, we have produced a list of differences between a salesperson and a sales expert. Remember that while the first step is completing any of these amazing courses, the second and possibly more important step is taking action even if it's imperfect action. Consultative selling has transformed the way sales work. It has been accepted for almost three decades and used in many different sectors. Once, salespeople were encouraged to be product experts, able to answer any detailed question about their goods or cheerfully demonstrate all of the advantages over competitors. Prior to the change that created the consultative sales process, customers were given presentations and then shown their products. The goal was typically to show off their product. Now, during a meeting, a salesperson enters a consultant and asks questions while being attentive and service oriented they make changes based on what the customer says they want in a solution. Sales expert and salespeople are not the same, yet they are very similar in a way. A salesperson is a person who travels to a different place and brings the company's product to the potential customer. He offers his own solutions and is an intermediary. Sales expert offers advice and don't sell anything about their own expertise to others as a salesperson does. Salespeople should have good communication skills and no computers, so they are more effective. Sales experts are people with knowledge of both computers and the human aspect that enables them to give great customer service. They work harder because they care about customers' needs, while salespeople are only concerned with making money. A salesperson's main goal is to sell the product. His first approach will be to pique the person's interest in the product he is selling. A sales expert, on the other hand, has a broader scope of work beyond just selling such as talking with clients, solving problems, and coming up with solutions to different situations. If you need someone to promote your company's product and help increase the profits of the company, then you should hire a salesperson. If you need someone to solve all the problems in your company and manage all of your customers and clients, a sales expert is the one you should go for. Sales experts are good at communication skills as well as applying their understanding of technology 
with computer science to maximize the production of your sales efforts. If you don't hire the right person for this job, it can be complicated. Though the automation will never entirely overtake the effectiveness and capabilities of human beings, automation has a profound effect on the state of sales. If you are in sales and you are good at what you do, then technological assistance may be your best sales tool since the telephone. A sales expert is someone who knows the trends, their clients, and their potential solutions inside and out. They work with a client as a partner or subject matter coach to find any solution one might need. They would never pressure you into purchasing a certain item, but instead search for the answer that would best suit your needs. Sales experts will view innovation as an opportunity to improve their efforts rather than as an obstacle in their way. A sales expert understands the significance of human-to-human -human interaction so they may utilize technology to increase their contact time with prospective clients and find new leads. They use data to identify potential sales opportunities. Asking questions can help when talking to potential clients. Experts ask the following. What do you do? What do you need? And how might we discover ways to improve together? This is not an opportunity for salespeople to try to make a sale or exchange for their services. It is a chance for them to become more of a professional and meet the needs of a client. Studies have shown that there are a variety of qualities that make a good salesperson. But the most important is being an expert in your field. Many professionals have dealt with buyers who require an expert salesman. These people respond differently to traditional salespeople. Buyers want a salesperson who is able to offer expertise in the prospect's business. They want to be learning and guided so they can increase their market knowledge. Studies reveal that many buyers are inexperienced, which encourages this demand for more knowledgeable salespersons. So, if you want to know what kind of salesperson are you, here are a few important differences to understand. The expert should be knowledgeable about the buyer's industry, marketplace, and competitive position before entering a conversation. Based on that background, they should be specific in knowing what the top business pressures are instead of asking the old approach like, what is your pain? Or, what are the big issues you are facing right now? Use this approach. Organizations in your industry with whom we work to face these top three business pressures. An expert can compare an individual to others within their field and show them what they need to do to succeed. Instead of asking, where do you want to be? The expert will ask, 
Here is where you are in comparison to others. And here is where they are going. Sales calls give potential buyers a chance of becoming customers. They also have the potential to provide standalone value, regardless of a sale occurring. Calls can be an incentive for buyers to take them in the first place. Completing the empty pad of paper days, today's clients want you to come prepared to their meetings. Presenting solutions to their problems and not just asking them questions helps seal the deal. Furthermore, starting with topics that are important to your client makes you more reputable in their eyes. We all know that there are different types of salespeople out there, but having worked with literally thousands of different salespeople, I've discovered four key types and their strengths and weaknesses. And there is one type in particular that outperforms all of the others out there. Do you know which type you are? We have magically moved into my conference room here, and I want to share with you the four types based on two criteria. The first criteria is how strategic is someone? If they're highly strategic, then they're gonna be up here. And if they're not strategic, then they're down here. And on the other axis, we have pioneering. So on the one hand, they're really going out and they're pioneering. On the other hand, they're not they're staying in and they're not doing any pioneering. And so within this matrix, we have four different types that I tend to see. And I'm gonna walk you through each type really quickly. The first that we'll focus on is the relationship building. Because I think this is the type of person that a lot of folks have idolized over the many years. And this is what a lot of salespeople tend to fall into. They are strategic, so they have good relationships, but they're not pioneering. And so these people tend to have a lot of strong relationships and they've developed a lot of trust, but on the other hand, they're not going out and identifying new customers, identifying new prospects, and so they're vulnerable. The next person that we'll look at is the hunter. This is a person that I hear a lot of business owners saying, oh, we want more hunters in our business, on our sales team. But the problem with the hunter is that yes, they're doing a lot of prospecting, but they tend to not be very strategic. And so as a result, they're doing a lot of that prospecting, but they're not asking for those introductions. They're not necessarily going after those biggest opportunities. And so at the end of the day, they tend to burn out and they're not in sales for that long. Another category is the farmer. The farmer is the person who ultimately is going to go broke because they are not strategic and they're not pioneering. And so this is the person who's staying in their office, they're not doing what they need to be doing, but they're also not strategic. And so we, of course, never want to be in the, the farmer category. If you see yourself as a farmer right now, chances are it's time to move on to a new career because you're gonna be in trouble. Lastly is the strategist. The strategist is if you are right now a relationship builder or a hunter, you can either move up into the strategist category or you can move over into the strategist category. This person is both strategic and is pioneering. We all want to be in the strategist category. This is a person who is going to think through a selling situation where they will leverage their existing context. They develop strong relationships with their clients and they get introductions to new prospects and customers. But on the other hand, they're still consistently doing the prospecting activities that they need to do in order to close sales. So moving forward, we want to make it a goal that we are now in the strategist category. And if, by the way, if you find yourself in the hunter or the relationship builder category, start to think about what you need to do in order to move over into this category. So, are you an expert? Let me give you a hint. You are. Assuming you aren't on your first week of the job, you know more about your offering and your client's challenges than any prospect out there. And it's time to use this to your advantage. 
don't forget, your prospect only knows his or her challenges, but you get the 30,000 foot perspective on your prospect's industry and their challenges. Number one, start your opening with observations of challenges you see in the marketplace. I wanna give you an example. Here is how my client, who is a trade show display provider, starts his interactions. So he'll say something along the lines of, Right now, I'm seeing a lot of companies that are worried about their trade show's ROI, they're concerned about being perceived as the leader in their industry, and finally, they're struggling to stand out on the show floor more than ever before. Do any of these issues ring true to you? Now, time out. This opening is providing value, but it's also something that the prospect can relate to. So by doing that, we are setting ourselves up as an expert who sees what's really going on. Number two. Ask if they've experienced any of those challenges. Now that you've listed off the three issues, it's time to actually engage. And you heard in my example what it sounds like. So by listing the challenges, you show that you know what's going on in their world, and then you seal it off with, do any of these issues ring true to you? By doing that, you are going to get them to open up to say, yeah, actually, we are dealing with one of those challenges. Number three. Dig into the response with more questions. This is where you act as the doctor to discover what is really, really going on. And prospects will see value when you help them articulate a challenge that they hadn't even mentioned to anyone before. This creates massive value and sets you up as the expert. Here is the question. Who is going to continue the advancement of technology in your sales force. If you are not sure, most managers will know who their experts are because they will show themselves soon. It is important to look for someone in your team who is at the forefront of new technology. They should be leading any efforts you want to pursue or even sourcing new technologies on their own. Look for the salesperson who is proactively pursuing technological innovation. It will help make your sales efforts more successful as time progresses into the never-ending revolution of technology. Sales expert and salesperson both have to do with the sales field, but the expertise required for each role is completely different. As a startup, you may not know what the best candidates for your company look like. However, while you may lack experience with recruiting, human resource managers know what's best for their company. They will tell you the difference between what a salesperson and a sales expert can do for your company. And that is it for this video, BBC member. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we have delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon.